Bobby Torres of Fright Box Recording here to share with you my approach to EQing and compressing your bottom snare mic. Now I've seen guys do this a thousand different ways, so I figured I'd share with you my approach because it's really simple. For me, I get all of my power and punch and the main character of the snare from the top snare mic, and I use the bottom snare mic primarily just for the sizzle and the snap of the snare. I've seen guys try to get low end out of both mics, and for me it just never works. I prefer to just get low end out of one source and uh, use the other mic primarily just for the high end sizzle and snap. Okay, so I have a sample here of a straightforward rock tune by my good friends in a band called Blue Lizard, uh, where I mic'd the top and bottom snare. So I'm gonna play the sample, take a close listen to the snare drum, and then we are going to dissect piece by piece exactly how I treat my bottom snare mic. So let's check this out. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat, just to show you how much the bottom snare mic actually adds to the snare sound, is I'm gonna play back the same sample with the bottom snare mic completely muted. So let's check this out. Okay, that's without the bottom snare. Now let's listen to it again with the bottom snare mic on. So if you were paying close attention, in my opinion, the bottom snare mic adds more of a three-dimensional sound to the snare drum. Because remember, a snare drum is really two sounds. It's the sound of the top head resonating and also the sizzle of the snares underneath. So for me, miking just the top snare generally doesn't work because I really miss the sound of the sizzle underneath. So I have a very specific way of EQing it and compressing my bottom snare mic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the bottom snare mic now completely bone dry with no processing at all and uh, pay close attention. Let's check it out. Okay, so in my opinion, that's not too flattering. Uh, you hear a bunch of kick drum bleed, and to me, it just sounds like a bunch of sizzly crap. Uh, that's because the track is raw right now. And I think that's the reason why some people shy away from miking the bottom snare mic, because they mic it and try to blend it in with the top snare mic without treating it properly, at least my version of treating it properly. Um, okay, so. With that being said, for me, the order in which I EQ and compress my bottom snare mic is very important. Uh, and there's a specific reason why. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my EQ settings. So right now my EQ is bypassed. So let's listen to that snare drum again with no EQ at all. So it sounds like a sizzly boxy mess. It really does not sound usable at all right now. So let's listen to the snare drum now with the EQ engaged. And then I will explain to you exactly what my approach was when I EQ the snare. So let's check this out. Okay, so as you can tell, a lot of that boxiness is gone and all that's left is that sizzly, snappy kind of sound, which for me is the whole point of the microphone on the bottom snare in the first place. Um, so the way I treat it is I am not shy with the high pass filter at all. If you look here, my high pass filter is set to around 300 Hertz. Uh, I then have a bunch of cutting happening in this case at around 700 Hertz to get rid of a bunch of the boxiness. And then I have a high shelf boosting some sizzle on top. That's it. Now, if you were paying attention, you may be asking, where's your gate? Uh, by EQing your bottom snare like this, you really don't have to gate your bottom snare, which is awesome. Uh, the main reason why is when you're miking underneath the snare drum, the snare drum is filtering out all the high end of the cymbals because the microphone is directly in front of the springs of the snare. Uh, the main problem is just kick bleed. But when you high pass in this fashion, a lot of your kick bleed is gone. Let's listen once more, let's check this out. Now, you can hear a little bit of the resonance of the kick drum. It's actually making the springs vibrate, but it doesn't actually hurt the sound. In my opinion, it actually makes the drum set sound a little more three-dimensional. Okay, so now, when it comes to compression, here's the thing. If you notice, I have my compressor before the EQ, and there's a very specific reason for that. Remember, because the compressor is sitting before the EQ, it's reacting to all of the inherent low end within the track. Even though we're filtering out all of the low end, the uh, compressor doesn't know any better. Uh, the compressor is seeing all of that low end. Uh, and for me, I just love the character of a compressor being hit with the low frequencies. Okay, so I'm gonna bypass the compressor really quick, and let's listen to the track without any compression again, but with EQ. Let's check this out. 
Okay, so that's no compression. Now I'm going to engage the compressor. And for me, the compressor for the bottom snare mic is there mainly for character. I'm not really using it for any level control or anything like that. I just love the sound of the compressor clamping down on my snare drum. Let's check it out. Now remember, this compressor is reacting to all of the natural low end within that bottom snare mic. Even though we are getting rid of all of that low end, the compressor is reacting to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this compressor and I'm gonna place it after the EQ for a second, the way that I don't like it. But just to show you the difference, here's the compressor reacting to the EQ'd sound. So in other words, we're high passing the, the under snare mic and then the compressor is now reacting to that high pass sound. Let's check it out. Okay, it's close, but it's not as warm sounding to me. I prefer the character of the compressor being smacked with all of that low end that's natural within the track. Again, let's listen to it with the low end smacking the compressor. Let's check this out. Now it's kind of hard to put into words. To me, it has a nice soft, pillowy kind of tone. Again, the low end is being filtered out, so none of the low end is conflicting with our bass guitar or our kick drum or our toms or the low end of our guitars. Uh, but we still have that nice, soft, pillowy thing happening from the compressor because the compressor is reacting to the un-EQ'd sound. Now, please, if you have any questions at all about this, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Just through experimentation, I've just found that I like the sound of the compressor hitting the un-EQ'd sound, and I also don't like leaving a ton of low end in the under snare mic. To me, it just ends up conflicting with the top snare mic. This is just my particular preference, uh, but give it a shot. You might end up liking it. So, okay, so let's listen to the track once more. Um, I'm gonna actually play the track without the bottom snare mic, just so you can see how much that bottom snare mic actually adds to the snare drum sound. Let's check it out. So this is without the bottom snare mic. Okay, now with the bottom snare mic. Okay, to me, it just makes the snare drum sound way more three-dimensional. Again, my philosophy is because the snare drum is really two sounds. It's the smack of the top and the sizzle of the bottom, so why not capture both? Okay, if you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon in order to be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description. And don't forget to download my quick EQ guide that contains all of my EQ settings that I always return to when starting mix. There is a link in the description below. Until next time, happy mixing.